The best teachers who taught me, and there are very few of them, I'm sorry for all my teachers, but <laughs> they, are, they, they, were, they were using simulations. They used to show us how to do something. Yes. Like they would draw stuff, right? Yeah. So if education goes in that direction, if we've got machine models or machines yeah. that can simulate stuff, yes. right? If somebody talk, talks to you about mathematics and if you're moving something from this side to this side yes. of the equation, you are changing signs and stuff. Yes. If you see it visually, as yeah. opposed to somebody who's just talking to you, yeah. right? So you, you learn best. Okay. So what we are doing is teachers can talk, it's fine. And then let's use these machines to create those simulations. Good day. Welcome to another podcast of Discover Talent with Vico.net. My name is Gakhisho Reed, and today I have the pleasure of having Tabiso Rangkhal. How yes, are you, sir? sir? I'm good, sir. How are you? Thank you for joining us. Pleasure to be here, sir. Thank you. Now, you are an environmental scientist, uh, and you studied geoinformatics. Yes, sir. Um, firstly, what does that mean? Sounds like a lot. Geoinformatics or environmental science? Both. Okay, so environmental science is deals with sustainability or sustainable development, or how we inter how we how we can interact with our environment sustainably mm -hmm. you know, without depleting resources or you know without harming other habitats like. Other, other fauna need habitats, like okay. animals need habitat and stuff like that. Yep. And then geoinformatics, it's like, um, it's data science in, in geography. That's okay. pretty much what it is, yes. Yep. It's using satellite imageries, it's using um, software, it's using digital yep. means to analyze environments to analyze okay. our geographies, be it here on planet Earth or anywhere else in the universe. Okay. Yes, sir. So that's where technology meets the environment. Yes, sir. That's where um, technology met. That's where, yes, sir. That, that's pretty much what yeah. it is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Now, that's quite interesting because you are a software developer as yes, well. Sir. Now, I'm quite interested to know how you shifted from chasing tornadoes, right? Um, <laughs> to software yes. development. Yes, sir. Where did that transition come from? Well, firstly, software is much safer than chasing tornadoes. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 <laughs> yeah, so that happened in, I think it was in second year. I was introduced to geoinformatics as a module. Mm -hmm. And then um, that took me to coding, a little bit of it. It was an abstracted version of it. And I liked that. Okay. I liked using computers to solve problems, numbers and stuff. Mm. And I wanted to know more about that part. So I went to data science, like I said, it's, it's data in geography. Mm. And then when I got into data, I realized that, well, this is nice, but I can't package this mm. individually. So I wanted something that I could, I could package individually. So did a little bit of research and then came across some courses and then that took me straight to, to software. Okay. And in software, I chose web applications specifically. So I realized, okay, I can package this. this mm. I can create an entire system mm and ship it to anywhere in the world. Mm. Unlike data where I need to be part of an organization. Mm. Mm. Now, it's nice to be part of an yep. organization, but it's also advantageous to be able to create something and showcase it. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes. okay. I mean, two things. I think one is that it demonstrates the agility of your uh, undergrad studies, yes, right? Sir. That you could branch out you know, into what you're currently doing now. Yes, sir. Um, and the second observation for me is that you've got the best of both worlds because sustainability uh, in today's world, right? Yes, it's a massive opportunity. 
um, in terms of especially environmental sustainability, um, and then the tech world in terms of your software development, uh, and hence the you know uh, the best of two. So well done uh, on that front. Thank you. Now, if I said to you in a minute or two, as a software developer, what do you do? Take us into confidence in terms of what does that world involve? Okay, that involves solving, I'll say business problems and business in a larger sphere of things in a sense that it, a business can be a school, can be anything. So somebody comes to me and say, you know what, Tabi, so I need a platform it's basically platforms and systems. I need a platform for my learners to, uh, assuming that we're talking about a school, yeah. for my learners to be able to access material, to be able to you know, have answers to the frequently asked questions. Yeah. And as well, I need the administrative side, side of it where um, I can do my administration. So that's basically what I do. So, Every day I'm dealing with a business case where somebody comes with the specifications of a system or a platform that they want. Okay. And then I use a computer obviously and code to build that platform. Yeah. Yeah, it can be any type of software. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So to make it practical, so if I come to you and say, I wanna win the lotto. Yes sir. Uh, let's work on permutations. Yes. that would get me closer to hitting the jackpot. Yes, sir. And we will build a code and build a program on that. Mm -hmm. You agree with me? Yes, that, that's, that's actually very, I don't know what to call it, but just- You, you, you need to be careful about your response because <laughs> you're going to get a lot of calls. <laughs> uh, that, okay. That, I know we're stretching it a little bit. Yes. So, you know, I just wanted to illustrate the point. Yes. So yeah. yes, that, that's, that's actually a, a freakish, if I may call it that, <laughs> example, because yeah. just recently a friend of mine and I were trying to, we actually created that thing. We're trying to find out if there's a, there's a pattern yeah. In the in the bonus ball of some some yeah. lotto somewhere in the world. Yeah. Right. So we built that thing. We started with um a part of it that extracts the data. Yeah. <laughs> so we extracted yeah. like probably 100, 160 something draws. Yeah. And then we took that, cleaned it up, and then we fit it into a model, yeah. trying to find out if we can <laughs> catch a bonus ball, right? Yeah. So we did that and yeah, they really are random. You can't. <laughs> At least what we found is that yeah. it was it was a random thing. We cannot. We, so we performed the whole thing. The the, the okay. it was not necessarily yeah. the permutations. We used something called neural yeah. networks. Yeah. Right. So it, what what it, the outcome of it is just um, uh, probability distributions where it shows that out of these ten balls, uh, bonus balls. Yeah. This is the one that is more likely to come out, yes. and then the following one is this one. There's yeah. some probability, and then, yeah. and then, and then, and then. Yeah. yeah, we won some, but I think it was by chance. <laughs> <laughs> so it's still luck. Yeah, at and the still end of luck the day. at the end of all the right. day. So there's no formula for that. Yeah, the model was not accurate yeah. at all. So the model was fine, yeah. but the So they normally say that the, the, the more you play, the higher the chances yes, of winning. Yes, that's okay. absolutely all right. Yes. It's quite interesting, your example, because we didn't talk about this, right? Yes. <laughs> um, so it's scary that it was too close yeah, for comfort. Yeah, it's a freakish, yes. <laughs> um, No, that's excellent. But yes. to, to, as a software developer, in what type of skills did you find yourself having to build, right? Yes. Sir. Um, especially to continuously improve yourself. Um, because I'm sure there is a software developers and there's software developers, yes, right? Sir. What yes, differentiates sir. them? Okay, what I had to build, I had to go back to maths, to be honest. I had, yeah. I had to go back to maths because the deeper I went into the field, I realized that to understand the, the, the real basics and to be able to build something that works, that functions at a certain level, I had to my math skills had to, had to be up there. Mm. So I had to go back to maths and I had to go back to 
to coding. Mm -hmm. I had to go back to coding. I had to go back to things called um, data, uh, but in these things are uh, data structures and okay. algorithms and such things. And because now I focus more on AI and machine learning, yeah. math is way, way, way needed. Like yes. is so that the, the skill that I had to build more was maths and communication. Obviously, applies yeah. everywhere. Yeah. So I had to build that and just understanding of how computers works, uh, how computers work, and what kind of problems that people come across on yeah. the daily basis. So I also I had to have the eye for to have the eye for for the common problems yeah. that are usually not solved, but yeah. they are common. Yes, uh, to understand them in depth. Yeah. That's what I mean, yes. Yeah. So math follows you, right? It's almost like a life skill now. For me, yes. Yeah. I, 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 can't, I can't run away from it. Yeah. So much so that I do it every day. Like literally yeah. now, I went back to books and I do math like a grade 12 or when I was undergrad, I still yeah. do, yeah. still scribble down just to get my mind in that frame. Yes, yes. And, and... I mean, one of the, at the cornerstone of mathematics is problem solving, right? Absolutely. Um, now, if, if you had to be a CEO of your company where you're working today, right? And no pressure. And, okay. and, and, and you had the pleasure to direct it, right? Two, three things that you want to problem solve that will grow the organization uh, from your perspective and field, right? What would be those things as a software developer? You say, if we start focusing on these, we'll start seeing growth. So, okay, just to understand the question first, um, is it a structure of the organization or something that we built that will grow the organization? Is something that, that you built. All right. So, okay, so currently where I am consulting, we are building a... A, a language model, like it's a, a chatbot. Yeah. The easiest way is to, to put it is a chatbot. So what it is, is um, it's like a chat GPT for, for maths, for, 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 for the basic education. So from grade 12 backwards. So we are building that. So I would build something like that because I'm more into education. So okay. we are building something like that. And we think that, that that's going to grow the organization. So that chatbot focuses, the, the, the knowledge base that it has, you know, ChatGPT has all, the entire internet. The knowledge base of this particular model is the math syllabus for, from grade R up to grade 12. Okay. So we, kind, we, we, we condensed it a little bit to make sure that when learners log in, every grade 12 learner at some point or grade, grade 11 or whatever, but it recognizes also when you ask a question, what level of meds are you asking? So it answers based on that. Mm. So it has a personality of, of that kind. So we would build something like that. We, we are building something like that. And also things that we, we are working on or that we are trying to grow is the automation part of things. Okay. Where almost anything that doesn't necessarily need humans, any administration work. Yeah. It's automated. We are trying to automate some of those things, payments, uh, capturing certain information, marks and stuff. Yeah. So that's automation and building certain products that our people can, can use. Like, okay, this chatbot is a teacher's assistant. Let me put mm. it like that. It's mm. like a tutor that you have all the time yeah. with you. Yeah. Are, are, you, are you, I mean, with automation, AI, machine learning, all of these technologies, right? Mm. Um, there are careers that are becoming, or some have even become obsolete. Um, are you saying that in time, we will be replacing teachers as well? Absolutely not, no. Okay. No, but we will make teaching more efficient. Okay. Yeah, we'll definitely make so teaching more efficient. So this is to complement, This is to not to yes. replace. Yeah. Because I, I think, okay, the best teachers who taught me, and there are very few of them, I'm sorry for all my teachers, but <laughs> they, are, they, they, were, they were using simulations. They used to show us how to do something. Yes. Like they would draw stuff, right? Yeah. So if education goes in that direction, if we've got machine models or machines yeah. that 
can simulate stuff. Yes. Like if somebody talk, talks to you about mathematics and if you're moving something from this side to this side of yes. the equation, you're changing signs and stuff. Yes. If you see it visually, as yeah. opposed to somebody who's just talking to you, yeah. right? So you, you learn best. Okay. So what we are doing is teachers can talk, it's fine. And then let's use these machines to create those simulations. Yeah. Okay. So this is about bringing teaching to the classroom Absolutely. in a visual way, in Absolutely. a practical way Absolutely. to enhance understanding, right? Absolutely. So it's not to, to replace um, those that are providing the learning as well. Yeah, there's no way we can. Okay. I, I doubt it. We might yeah. reduce the number of teachers needed, but that's just me being honest. Yes. 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 So we might reduce the number, you know, but not yeah. replace them entirely. Yeah. But but and, and even reducing the number because they, there is this notion that machines are going to take over human jobs, right? Yes, it, that's one side of it. Absolutely. But it doesn't mean that you can't reskill the human to occupy new spaces, isn't Absolutely. it? So yes. it's it's not an equation that's a dead equation. Yes, sir. Uh, in that sense. Yes, All right. and also they can still move to, sorry, to other sides of, of teaching. Like yeah. they can move to behind the machines, how, yes. to how those machines work. They can administrate the machines. Yeah. They can, you know. Okay. No. That I, way they will still be teachers. Yes. yes. No, 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 I hear you. Mm. So let's brag a little bit now. When, when, when you look at, you know, your career so far or your achievements in general, um, what are you most proud of? Okay, so first of all, I'm proud of the qualifications that I got, yeah. you know, and I'm proud of the fact that what I'm doing now, um, I chose to do it out of my volition. So I didn't do software in school. Okay. I did it outside through other courses. And then I'm here to be proud of what we are building now. You know, at some point, I think a year ago even, because that, this is how fast the, the things are going. A year ago, we're just creating web applications that yeah. are the, your normal web applications. Yes. Today, we are building machines that can literally talk to people. Yeah. So I'm here to be proud of those models yeah. that we are building now. Probably they're going to debut towards the end of the year, beginning of the year, but I'm here to be proud of that. I think the best work is still coming. Yeah. Yes, sir. And that's the way to, to go. That's the way to go. Absolutely. Yeah. Yes, sir. But thank you for being with us. Uh, we appreciate it. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Tabiso Rangkala. Um, and what he's saying is that don't throw away your school textbooks. You're going to need them at work. <laughs> um, but thank you, sir. Uh, it's been a pleasure. Thank you very much. Thanks, you. Thank, thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. Thank you.